Most people don't have seal pullers, so I use an old piece of wood. And you can feel right when you hit the lip. That's when you come on the other edge of it and pound it out. We got a fighter here. Yeah, that's the first time I've seen that one. There we go. That's how you do it without the right tools. See, our goal of our shop is simple. We use tools that you're going to have at home. No burrs, no scratches. Clean. Now we gotta do a little bit of cleaning because that's where oil will like to come up. There we go. You can see how much a little cleanup we gotta do. So I can clean it up before we put the new seal in. What I like to do is I like to put a little bit of RTV inside of here, and I'm talking just like a skim coat. You don't need a lot, but this is just a little added insurance that we're not gonna have a leak out of the seal cover. And then just come in here with my finger and I'll smooth it out. Now the seal itself does have its own coating, but uh, one thing I've learned over the years, a little bit of extra insurance doesn't hurt you. Not very much, as you can see, it's just not, that's not very much, that's a skim coat. Now most people are also not going to have seal drivers as well. Now I don't either because I frankly just don't think you need them. They're overrated. Lightly tap it, you see it starts coming up on the edge, you get there for next. Done. As you can see, it's completely flat all the way around. All right, well that's how you do the front seal on the 2000 Pontiac Sunfire. All right, this is an RTV-less gasket. Do not use RTV here. Do not use RTV here. All right, it's tools, knees, block wood, a hammer, some miscellaneous changes. Kidding. All right, so when you put this uh, gasket in, what you want to actually do is start at the top here. There's a reason why, because this is kind of the aftermarket is not going to be as fitting as you'd want it to be. So you want to start at the top left on the crankcase. 10 o'clock. Failure to get this seated will get you a massive oil leak and one pissed off customer. All right, so once you get the gasket in, you just make sure you go around and make sure all of your gaskets pushed in because it's a pressed fit and once you have that done you have finished your gasket to your timing cover okay in this segment we're going to show you how the valve cover gaskets installed now there is a recessed channel you want to push down there is no RTV used, so don't use any of that gold stuff or you know, try to RTV this gasket. It's not, it's just not needed. Now valve cover gaskets, why they always leak is people always over tighten them. And as you can see with the O-ring, it, it's going to protrude and I'll show you that now. Yeah, you got to get them seated, that's for sure. And it's just to show you how the protrusion works. That's what your ceiling surface actually is. All right, let's go install this on the car now. Tore this engine apart, we realized that, well, there are some leaks. And when you're going to go in this deep to an engine and not restore, let's say, sealing, you're just asking for an engine to seize. So today we went and got a Spectre oil pan and I want to show you the difference. First I'm going to show you the factory pan and unfortunately the uh, defects that we see with this pan. I'll get you guys a close up now. But as you can see right here, see the ripple? And this is where the main area leak was coming from, was like right in this area and right through here towards the back. We had a little bit of seepage. Uh, you can't RTV that and it's all bent up. 
Um, over here is some weird little chunk thing going on. And this pan's up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So you'll never get that to seal. Um, on top of that, the original pan right here is a little rough, so you always have a leak here. And the worst thing about this job is there's only one gasket made in the aftermarket, and it is a cork gasket. But unfortunately, today we have to do cork. And when I do these two twos, I do them in a prescribed way. It takes a couple days. I know there's going to be techs out there they are going to be like, you know, you could do this, such, such, yeah, yeah. But you know what? I don't have comebacks. So when I do these kind of things, I do them in a way that I don't have comebacks. The original GM used a mastic gasket here. And I'll show you pieces of that. Now what does mastic mean? Uh, it's, it's like RTV, except for this is built so it expands so when they put the pan on, it doesn't um, push out, okay? Now it does use a normal rubber in the back, which is kind of cool, but as you can see, uh, over time this disintegrates and this is pretty much why you get oil leaks. And this motor has bad oil leaks from the top to the bottom of the head gasket, but this is the big problem right here is this mastic gasket. I mean, just look at it, no wonder. But I mean, you're trying to GM, you're trying to hide ripples in a pan with RTV, it don't work. Fortunately, the customer's on the hook for the repair. It's not recalled or anything, so. Yeah, that's pretty sad. Now let's look at the new pan from Spectre. Now granted, we're gonna have to clean this pan up, there's some dust in it, and you wanna pour some oil in here so it doesn't rust once you start exposing it to air. One of the big difference with Spectre that I like is that they actually put a bead here bead right here so that way your gasket will actually have something to bead into and then you can what I'm going to do is an RTV cork I'm going to petrify the cork and that's how I get around leaks with these um, new deal here the pan feels heavier I mean it just looks like something that GM should have done and look no ripples so I'm not going to have to worry about leaks with this engine so I'm going to get this cleaned up and prepped we'll be right back Oil pan is now prepped. Let me show you the gasket we're going to put on next. One thing I like to do is I like to let the gasket actually set flat for about a day because right here is your front ceiling, so crankshaft, uh, timing chain here, your transmission, oil pan seal here, the transmission side called flywheel side. But it's a lot easier to get this to seal right if you allow it to sit flat instead of it being crinkled like out of the uh, box it comes. So I'm going to get my RTV set and then we'll get this set. One thing I noticed about the, oil, the rear oil seal, one thing I don't like is that they don't actually overlap and have it sit inside the pan. So it does kind of free float here. Yeah, I don't really like that. So unfortunately, I wasn't going to use RTV here, but I am now. I just don't see a way for this to hold. Now I am using the Felpro RTV and I've had good luck with this with timing chains. And you're going to want to go all the way around because you're going to have to pretty much build a petrified layer for the cork to live. Now when I've done this in the past I'd actually used the orange RTV but since it's 2016 I haven't been able to find any. The auto parts stores are not carrying it anymore. I can find it on eBay, but you're going to pay a premium for it. The red does not work. Don't use it. It's not a good substitute for orange. So Make sure you put a liberal coat up here in the front where the crankshaft comes out. You want a real liberal coat because this is where one of the main leak areas are, is right in the front of this motor. Now what I like to do is run my finger over it so I can get a nice, good, uniform coat here. And being that they gave us lines, I'm going to fill it up to the line. So that way it doesn't crush our gasket. Now I will let the RTV set and tack for about 10-15 minutes being it's kind of hot tonight. Um, we're going to do only about 5. I will let this side of the pan sit overnight. I'm doing this in steps like I said in a prescribed manner. And it does work. The last time I checked the truck that I had done this on I had a 2.2 which was a 95 S10. Two years after I had no leaks. So, Alright let that tack for about 5 minutes and we'll be right back. Yeah, 
Yeah, getting this lip seal right here is the hardest part of this job. So what I'll do is I got some screwdrivers I'm going to put in the end so we can get the gasket hole set. It'll make this job a whole lot easier going back up. Basically vulcanizing the cardboard. Alright folks, we're going to let that set up. Uh, tomorrow when we get out of here, we'll be ready to finish this pan and actually do the installation. The reason why I do it like this is because it gives it plenty of time to seal and become petrified. So when we do put the final coat on the engine, just a little slight bead where it needs to be. If it goes, no leaks, good to go. Alright, well this concludes how to seal up one of these oil pans. Thanks for watching, click like, subscribe, we'll see you next time.